Welcome to the Career Change Podcast, where you'll discover the frank and practical advice and resources that are already proven to work in the real world when it comes to changing careers or figuring out what business is right for you when you are a smart but likely also stuck, overwhelmed, or overthinking person in your mid 30s, your 40s, your mid 50s. I'm your host, Ricky Hansen, a career change advisor, entrepreneur, and former corporate HR professional with over 15 years' experience of helping thousands of people just like you identify or create careers or businesses that are both meaningful and future-proof. Welcome home. Hey, it's Ricky here. Welcome to episode 31 of the Career Change Podcast. Now, this particular episode is for you. If you've been in the same line of work, the same profession ever since leaving university, and now that you're considering a career change, you're falling into the trap of using the same standards or regulations or educational requirements that are applied in your current profession to all other parts of the working world. And that's not very helpful for your career change. Or you're just taking it for granted that it'll be the same demands that you'll be up against when it comes to entrance and educational requirements everywhere outside of your professional bubble that you've been in for years. Let me know if you can relate to this. In short, you're broadly ignoring just how much the working world has dramatically changed outside of the little bubble you've been in for many, many years. And as a result, you're probably right now feeling very, very limited when you think of of alternative career change options. Now, if you would like to change that, you're in the right place with this episode. So keep listening to what I got to say to you, but keep listening with a very open mind. Because here's what I can tell you, having been in the field of advising career changers and new entrepreneurs since 2005, so much of what a successful career change is down to, especially the smarter you are, is an all-around questioning your own assumptions, especially if you haven't changed careers before, and especially if you've been in the same line of work ever since leaving university. So let's do that. So here's what I mean by that. I have very often get emails from my podcast listeners saying, hey, Ricky, I've been a lawyer or IT consultant or marketing or finance professional, etc., as in in the same profession or industry ever since leaving university 10, 20 years ago. But how? But now I want to change. However, I feel really limited and stuck. And then pretty much all of them go on to say in this email to me, what else am I qualified to do? What else could I possibly do? Or in short, what can I get with what I've got? The issue with framing framing it like that is that you already feel limited in your career change journey before you even start. So I really, really want to talk about what to do instead, all right? But I'm sure you can relate to this in your mind. There is, well, what can I get with what I've got? What else could I possibly do? What else am I possibly qualified for, right? But it really comes down to this, what can I get with what I've got? Uh, Not a helpful place to start, as you probably noticed. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about who's asking this question, because it really is. Often the majority of my listeners, the majority of my clients, you know, you are highly qualified. You've been in the same profession for years. You've done really well. You've likely done the same thing since leaving university. You did what you were qualified to do or what you fell into and hence have been doing ever since. Maybe you even got certification or degree or you continue the continuous professional development. Often your friends or maybe even your family, they're in the same profession. It's kind of your entire world. It's what what you know, and therefore, which is normal, right? It's one of our biases. You just assume that the rest of the working life is, is like that everywhere else. This is especially the case with a lot of my clients over the years who've been lawyers, solicitors. They just have these expectations that, well, the regulations, educational requirements, you know, that, that's got to be the same everywhere else. You know, the, the career change, when it comes to that, they therefore apply their very, very, very limited experience of the working world to the rest of the working world and just assume the rules of the games are going to be the same in other places in the working world. And hence why they ask, well, what else am I qualified for? What can I get with what you've got? 
what can I get with what I've got? And generally the answer is therefore, well, nothing really. It's not helpful, okay? I really want to talk about this because I know a lot of you are doing this to yourself and it's not a good place to start your career change journey. Let's talk about a much more empowering approach and give it a try. And yes, I know there's some of you sitting, yeah, but Ricky, there still are old archaic arenas with pockets where old rules, they still do apply like law or medicine or certain areas of finance that are highly regulated and where certain rules need to be followed. And yes, of course there are. But that does not tend to be where my clients want to go. They tend to move on and want to move away from those areas that are highly regulated. And they have got to have a novel of like finance and, and IT, sorry, finance and law. And yes, there are still things that are regulated and very archaic and very old fashioned. But you are likely listening to the Career Change Podcast because you want to get away <laughs> from those areas. All right. So get over yourself. All right. And please, again, be open minded. Yes, there will be st- certain corners of the world, of the working world that are still very old-fashioned and will judge you and use the old parameters, but that's generally not the arenas that you'll be interested in if you're listening to the Career Change Podcast, okay? So again, keep questioning your assumptions if they're not helpful for you. What I want to do here in this particular podcast episode is I want to look at three other ways to start approaching the career change process, specifically for professionals who've never done anything else in their current profession and who feel limited up front. Let's talk about how you can start the process from a much more helpful, open-minded place rather than the limited bubble way of thinking that you might be in right now, okay? Because here's the thing, how you start often decides if you even get anywhere. Okay. And anything that I talk about here in this podcast, if you want me to go deeper on any of these issues in any for, you know, future podcast, then just let me know. Come over to the careerchangepodcast.com, sign up for my mailing list there, and then just, you know, send an email, let me know. And really, this is really all about changing your assumptions, changing your mindset right? This is a lot of the work that I do with my clients. Help them really question whether what they believe and what they currently say to themselves is true and helpful. This is so, so important. What you say to yourself and what you believe is key to everything you want. So let's just start with three antidotes that you can try on. But the most important thing is to really question your assumptions. So we'll talk about three antidotes here. Number one is to don't limit your options before you even get started. Okay. And we'll spend the most of the time on that. Then the second antidote we'll talk about is to leave the employee mindset behind, leave the employee mindset behind. And this is even if you still want a job. And then number three, stop waiting for permission, start exploring. Okay. Stop waiting for permission, start exploring. Number two and three, we won't spend that much time on. Uh, If you want to go deep on any of them, let me know. But let's go straight into number one. Don't limit your options before you even get started. And I really want to establish, I would like us to agree on a helpful starting point here. So listen closely. If you are not happy in your current profession, in your current line of work, the one you desperately want to leave behind, then don't use that profession or that line of work to limit your options for what's next for you before you even start the career change process. Don't use that thing you currently hate to limit or even decide the amount of career or business options that could be available to you or that you could create. Because that, my friend, is exactly what you're doing when you're asking what can I get with what I've got? What am I qualified to do? Or what else could I possibly do? Taking the requirements of that little bubble of yours and applying it to everything else. And again, (laughs) I know why you might be doing it. That's what a lot of people do. But if it's not working for you, then let's try something else. Okay. (laughs) Here's the thing. Asking what can I get with what I've got is a really unhelpful starting point to the career change process. If what you've got wasn't or isn't the right thing for you. If it's what you don't enjoy, what you hate, what you're exhausted by. Okay? Established. Instead, may I suggest that you ask a better, more empowering, and more helpful question instead. Because if you don't, 
Not only will you risk repeating the very same pain point in your next career or in your first business, you will also risk creating something you don't truly enjoy because you're basing it on something you don't enjoy. Okay? Most importantly, by asking only what can I get with what I've got, you literally miss out on 90% of the options and opportunities for what could be your very best career change or own business options. All right? So let's talk about the alternative, which is a much better question to ask and also a much scarier question to ask because now you've got some exploration work to do. I really suggest that what you do instead, you start by asking, what do I really want to spend my days doing work-wise at this stage of my work life? What do I really want to spend my days doing work-wise? Here's the thing. I very much believe that the meaning of your life is to find the meaning of your day. So what's so important is to think about, well, what do you actually want to spend your days doing when it comes to your work? Irrespective of what you've done professionally so far, you know, what do you want? What do you want your work day to be about? Other questions that are good for this is, what am I excited about? What am I curious about? What am I interested about? What do I care about? What matters to me? What do I want to get better at? Expertise or skills wise? Are there subjects I want to go deeper with? Who do I want to do it with? And also, who am I jealous of work wise in a good way? Or what problems do I want to solve in the world for a particular group or a particular subject? In short, what do I really want? Irrespective of what I've currently got that I don't enjoy anyway? That is a powerful question to ask. Blue sky thinking, okay? What I want to say though here is that where your old profession does come in handy is to help you figure out what you no longer want to touch with a barge pole in your work life. It's so important to get clear on what does that painful experience teach you in terms of what you never want to do again, but also to look at, well, what does it teach you in terms of what you can build on? What are the building blocks that you do want to build on from the career you've had so far? What are you already good at? What do you already get results with? And by the way, that's also where I always start the process with my clients who work with me through my program, Your Career Career Change Map. If you want to learn more about this, then you can check that out over at thecareerchangepodcast.com. So it's important that you use what you've got right now in terms of figuring out what you no longer want, but also what you want to build on. But don't use it to limit your future options, all right? And podcast you might want to check out as well is episode 30 for more about, you know, how to not throw it all away. So I also want to say as a quick side note, give yourself a break. It's totally normal if you don't yet know what you want. You just told me that you spend the last 10, 20 years of your life in the same line of work or job or company. You've likely had long working hours, spend time with similar people. And more recently, if you haven't been happy, you probably spend every hour outside of work just recovering or maybe bitching about work, you know, Netflix, Netflixing it, popping it, escape trips, instead of actually exploring what you might want to do instead. And also instead of actually, you've likely also missed out on the majority of the major developments that have been happening in the place, in the, in the, in the world of work over the last five to 10 years. So, but stop saying that you don't know what you want if you haven't even started exploring yet. So start exploring, start figuring out what you do want instead of repeatedly telling yourself that you don't know what you haven't got any options if you haven't even tried. Okay, so start figuring out what you do want versus saying that you don't know. Flip the script. Again, what feels most empowering. Okay, so do that. So that was point number one is to don't limit your options before you even get started. So think about what you really want. Okay, let's move on to antidote number two. And this is to leave the employee mindset behind. Leave the employee mindset behind. And this is, if it's even, I mean this, even if you still want a job, it is so important. This is, oh, I I really want to get on my high horse about this because this is something that is so unhelpful to so many people and they're not even aware of it. Let me ask you this. If you've always been employed by someone else, you know, if you've always had a job, then you've likely got the employee mindset. And here's what I mean by that. How do you feel right now about going out there in the big new world of work? You likely feel 
quite scared and intimidated. You know, you probably feel like you are at the mercy of gatekeepers and middlemen and recruiters and job ad criteria tickers. You kind of feel like the power is outside of you, that others are in charge of this weird place, right? I want to define what I mean by employee mindset. This is a concept I've worked with for many years, and it's really an outdated view of the world that, that often happens to people who've only ever been employees. That's why you might not see it yourself, but let me point out if you can relate to this. You very much see the working world, as which because this is what you've been trained to as an employee, as a place where you need to fit yourself into a predefined box and then go from one clearly defined job or career or profession box to another, you know, jump from one ladder to the other, or maybe slide all the way down, but feeling, you know, you've got to follow strict rules and regulations set by others, set by them. And it's this world that is guarded by gatekeepers to what people like you sneaking into where you don't belong or are not qualified for. <laughs> Does that ring a bell? My friend, this is so important to be aware of because asking what can I get with what I've got is literally an example of how you've been trained to think like an employee, how you've been brainwashed into an employee mindset, to follow rules set by others and to ask for permission, right? And as someone like you who now wants to do something different, it's important to understand that the employee mindset is not going to help you. It's not going to help your career change. Whoa, I hope I just gave you a bit of a mindset reset there. Could it be that it's the employee mindset that's really messing up your career change and really, you know, taking your power away and making you believe that you can only do what you are qualified to do or what you've done so far. Hmm? This is a really big issue um, if you have an employee mindset because it's it puts you in this position where the power balance is just skewed away from you, right? And this is classic employee behavior. You give your power away to others, to them, right? And let me tell you how this often plays out when people who've always been an employee, always had a J-O-B, rather than trying to do their own thing or their own thinking, when they then come to the career change process, then often what they do is they start the career change process by focusing squarely on what they don't have and they beat themselves up and they give their power away. And here's one of the most damaging ways that I see people starting their career change. They start their career change by looking at job ads. They start their career change by looking at job ads. Don't do it. Sorry, that was a weird noise. I was going to do the kind of like, don't do it. I could literally do a whole podcast episode or maybe even a whole course about don't start your career change by looking at job ads, right? Because if that's what you do, you are literally squarely looking at lack, what you don't have, what you don't yet have, rather than what you do have. And that's not a nice place to start. Let me tell you, as an old HR person, I used to work in human resources. I've written those job ads. HR, you know, job ads are literally HR's wish list for Father Christmas. Even for people who are already in a profession looking at job ads, it's made to make them feel bad, okay? So no matter what you do, repeat after me. Don't start the career change process by looking at job ads. Also, recruiters are not your career change friends. They're paid to find a square peg to square a frail, square hole. They're not paid to encourage you to change careers or to start your own business, right? This tip alone will save your sanity. Let me know if you can relate to this. I know there are so many of you listening who are better started the career change process by looking at job ads. How did that make you feel? Probably not terribly well. It made you feel shite, right? Like you didn't have anything to offer. That is not a good place to start, but it's a classic example of having the employee mindset of asking others for permission, of seeing where you fit into pre-existing boxes. It's much more helpful to think like an entrepreneur instead, like a career entrepreneur. I have a whole podcast about that because the antidote, and that's whether you want to be an entrepreneur or not, it's really, really helpful to think like an entrepreneur when it comes to how you start the career change process. So I do recommend you listen to episode seven of the career change podcast is called, what if I don't have enough experience? Because it's really about the antidote to the employee mindset with the entrepreneur mindset. And again, this is, you know, this is not about whether you want a job or whether you become an entrepreneur. It's a lot more about the mindset of what is going to help you change careers or start that business or get another job. Okay. 
So leave the employee mindset behind, please, even if you still want a job. Okay, let's move to point number three, antidote number three. Stop waiting for permission. Start exploring. Stop waiting for permission. Start exploring, right? Because really, if you have the employee mindset, then often what happens is you're really waiting for others to pick you or others to choose you or for others to give you permission. And you know what? Asking, what can I get with what I've got? What am I qualified to do? That's literally part of that as well. You're kind of asking for permissions. You're asking others. We need to dig way deeper than that. And one of the most important antidotes to be having this employee mindset is to be 100% in charge of your career change and to really be in charge and to give yourself permission. Here's the thing. And the older you are, the more of a problem this is going to be. Definitely if you're over 35, we grow up in this kind of work culture where we are not used to giving ourselves permission. So I really want you to think about this. We've been trained to, and, and we're used to looking for permission from external sources. This is normal biologically. You know, we're herd animals. We are hardwired to follow the herd. Because historically, if we didn't follow the herd, we would die, right? Those times are over now, though. But you might have noticed how this has applied to yourself so far in your career, right? Probably in your career up until now, if you are the classic, the Career Change Podcast listener, you likely ticked all the right boxes, right? You got permission, you got praise from all of the right sources, right? You, you did the right degree or you got the right job, you got the right promotion, you got the right, all the right things that you were supposed to do that you thought you did. But now you want something different. And maybe what you want might not be what those classic permission sources they expect of you or what they want you to do. You know, the career that you want now, maybe the business you want to start now, it might also not be what your work peers, they expect you to want or what they want you to want. It might not be what your family wants you to want, how society expects you to behave, right? So what that means, therefore, is that this time round, permission is likely not going to come from the sources you normally seek permission from. And that might be why you're stuck right now, okay? And why you're trying to have this kind of, what can I get with what I've got? Tell me, you know, what, what should I do and what's okay to do and what can I do? You need to stop that and you need to give yourself permission to think big and to look at what you really want. Don't wait for anybody else or expect anybody else to give you that permission, Giving yourself permission to go for what you really want or to figure out what you really want, whether it's creating a career or a business, that is the start of the most amazing career and life you could ever imagine. That giving yourself permission. Give yourself that permission to explore what you really want, to go for what you really want. Because you know what's even scarier than that? It's to not give yourself permission and to not live the life that you really want. There's a quote from my fellow Dane, the philosopher Søren Kierkegaard. And what he said was, the most common form of despair is not being who you really are. The most common form of despair is not being who you are. I inserted there, who you really are. Because <laughs> that's really what it is. I don't want that to happen to you. Allowing yourself to want what you really want, even if all you know right now is just that you want something better than what you have more, more exciting, more meaningful. Irrespect, you know, allowing yourself to want what you really want, irrespective of what others want from you. And to give yourself permission to think much bigger, to change careers, to start that business that is a vital part of getting the career transition process off the ground, right? Right? So stop asking, what can I get with what I've got? If you don't like what you've got, start exploring and figuring out what you really want. Use blue sky thinking, use role models. Go find out what is it that you really want. That is where you start. Again, this podcast is a lot about changing, you know, questioning your assumptions, having more powerful ways to think about how you start, how you keep going. I bet you, having listened to this podcast, and you might want to listen to this episode again, you might realize that a lot of how you think about the world of work is out of date. So try some of these alternatives. Start questioning your assumptions. Number one, 
Don't limit your options before you even get started. Could that be you? Also, number two, leave the employee mindset behind, even if you still want a job. Number three, stop waiting for permission. Start exploring. Give yourself that permission and get out there. You know, if you are stuck, you need to question your assumptions. This is where you start and enjoy the process. Let me know if you enjoyed this episode, if you want more. And also, if you want professional guidance with finding out what's next for you, I do have a program for that that combines, it's a hybrid program, combines the best of getting personal advice from me with epic video masterclasses. It's called Your Career Change Map. You can learn more about it over at the careerchangepodcast.com. Either way, come over there, say hello. But most importantly, question your assumptions and watch you getting unstuck. Thank you so much listening for listening to the Career Change Podcast. 